Hello and welcome back to the next video. This one is navigating the final discussion for our unit one on short stories. This is week four, discussion number nine, and it is a writing workshop with sample essays. So one of the things I've noticed teaching students for the last 15 years is that whenever an essay assignment pops up, the biggest fear a writer has is, am I doing this correctly? And so to alleviate, or at least help alleviate those fears, I've created a discussion that has sample essays from students that I had just a couple of weeks ago in my summer course, my summer English VO1B course. Um, and so we've got some sample essays here. So this is just week four, um, discussion nine. So you're gonna look at some sample essays um, we're going to really kind of get into the nitty gritty of the writing process and revision by taking a look at the parts that make up the essay. So whenever we read a piece, there's this part of us that says, this is good or this is bad. And we have this little gauge like within us. And so what we're addressing in this particular discussion with this activity is what we're addressing is, okay, is this essay good or bad, right? Is it effective or ineffective at delivering whatever message it has? And then we're going deeper and we're adding that layer of the question of why is it so good or how is it so good? What is the writer doing that makes this essay effective? So these are two essays I picked. They're both strong essays. I mentioned on here um, that uh, they, they're strong essays, but we're going to look at them and see what makes them strong. We're going to look at what makes them flow. And then we're going to look at in what ways can they be revised? Um, I remember a quote when I was in uh, the beginning of my grad school or the end of my undergrad. And the quote was this, it was writing is never finished. It's just abandoned. And if you've ever saved an essay from when you were younger, from years past and found it years later, when you read it, it's kind of cute, you giggle, it's kind of funny to see where you were at as a writer. Obviously, um, as a more mature writer, when you find it years later, there are things that you would revise about it. And sometimes even you would completely change, you already have completely changed your way of thinking. And so you don't even feel that way anymore. And so again, revision is a really important step of the writing process and that takes time and space. So stepping away from your writing for some time. But for this discussion, we're just going to look at these two samples and kind of get to the nitty gritty of what's working in them. So there's some questions here that might help you. Um, you're taking notes in your journal, and this is really your own your own uh, paper journal. This isn't for the journal log, but you're going to um, just jot down some things that you notice. When I'm reading and I'm doing it in an academic scholarly way, I always take notes and sometimes I go back to them and sometimes I don't go back to them. But I take notes to help me imprint and memorize and remember and really integrate the information that I'm receiving so I can plug it into what I already know. So here are some questions. So what is working in the essay? What makes it flow? As readers, when we're reading, we notice when something flows, we like it, it feels good. It's like listening to a song that has a really nice beat or a smooth melody or an awesome harmony and we can feel that. So writing is the same way. So what's making it flow? What makes it sound good? Um, is it the word choice? Is it the use of transitions that a writer uses? Um, are they really good at sectioning off ideas into really specific paragraphs so that as a reader you can follow along without reading long chunks? Um, so these are all things to consider as a writer um, when you are composing a piece so that your reader can take in the information really clearly and easily. Um, also, what is the writer's thesis? What is their argument? How is their essay organized? If it is a compare and contrast, for example, do they talk about one story first and then talk about the other story and then compare them in a paragraph and then contrast them in a paragraph? How are they? How is the writer organizing their ideas? Right. So you're taking note, you're observing these things. These are things that we do on a subconscious level or an unconscious level. We don't often do them consciously like, oh, I'm going to go in very with a certain sense of awareness and I'm going to look at this thing. Right. But I'm asking you to do that so that you can take away from these samples what you would like to do as a writer. Maybe there's writers, one of these two writers is doing something, is making some kind of writing move that you like and you want to try that. So that's why we're doing this. Um, and then the last one is how is the formatting? Is it formatted in MLA formatting? Are the, um, is the work cited correct? Are the quotes cited correctly with the parenthetical citation? So if you don't know that, then you might not speak to that in your critique. You might look at other things. 
Um, so again, you're going to um, read both of the samples. When you pull them up, one is a PDF and one is a Word document, and that's why they have different ratings here. One of them, the PDF has a low accessibility score because it's not as easy to read, um, I think, um, as the, the Word document, but that's beside the point. So again, when you download them both, they're going to come um, into your computer on mine, it, they pop up here. So I'm just going to pull them up so you can see what they look like. So here's the first sample. It's Noah Brown's. It's contrasting girl and fish cheeks. So um, Amy Tan's story with Jamaica Kincaid's story. So that's a compare and contrast. And you can see here, just at the top, you know that it meets the page requirement. The page requirement is three to five full pages. Um, so this is Noah's piece. So you can look through this piece. This is a sample. Take notes of things that are working, things that you might um, offer suggestions for revision or to enhance it to make it even stronger. And then you're going to click on the other student sample, and that is um, Sandra's. So um, I had a really hard time picking samples because there were so many really good ones. Um, hers happens to be about fish cheeks. I really like the way that she... Um, plays with this story in her essay and you'll see I don't want to give away too much but you'll kind of see how she plays with it so you can scroll through her essay and read it too so both of them are um, really strong interesting essays if you want actually to look at a sample essay of a different story one that isn't covered in these particular student samples let me know and I will find one for you I saved a lot um, I have some on hills like white elephants I have some on, um, you know, Fish Cheeks and Girl, and then I also have quite a few on Kate Chopin's story of an hour. That seems to be one that people like to offer a feminist critique of, and that's very interesting as well. So again, you're going to pick your story um, and pick which one everyone excites you in terms of posting your um, your response here. So the response is a little bit longer than you're than you're used to. It's three paragraphs of a thoughtful response. Um, and you're going to break each down paragraph, each of the paragraphs down following the bullet here. So the first one is one paragraph of what is working in the essay. So another way of saying that is what makes this a strong essay. The second one is um, offer suggestions for revision. So ideas um, where they can expand on information. Maybe it's interesting and you want to hear more about it. Um, questions that you might have, so that kind of speaks to things that you might want to hear more about. Um, formatting, organization issues, that kind of stuff. And then the last one, or the last paragraph that you're going to write about is one paragraph on how reading and workshopping these two essays is going to help you with your essay. So what did you learn, basically? What, did you, what are you taking away from doing this workshop um, and looking at these samples that's going to help you with your essay? So that is the last discussion for the unit. Um, don't forget to read and respond to another classmate's post where you're engaging in discussion. Um, remember that our last three major assignments, the journal log, the quiz, and the essay on short stories are all due at the end of this unit. We have week five to hash all that out. So again, just trust in the process and most importantly, have fun and see where it takes you.